Terry has worked in the mineral resource sector for over 25 years. He held a series of geoscience and operations management roles for exploration and mining projects across Australia, Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia before relocating to the United States, where he spent 13 years in various corporate roles with Newmont Mining prior to joining Anglo in early 2022. Terry oversees the growth arms of the company, including business development, strategic planning and exploration. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Courtney. I'm delighted to have made the journey back from Denver to be here in Kalgoorlie, just around the corner from my old home on Egan Street 20 years ago now. Well, I need to draw your attention to the disclaimer. Um, it'll be on our website if you need to read further details. So Anglo Gold Ashanti is a global gold miner and explorer with a proud history um, based in Africa. Our footprint extends across the Africas to the Americas, where we're expanding our presence back into the United States. And of course, Australia, where we've been operating in Western Australia's gold fields for more than two decades now. Along with our balance sheet, our greatest strength is our diversified, world-class portfolio and the teams that run our mines. Last year, we produced 2.472 million ounces of gold at an all-in sustaining cost of $13.83 an ounce US and generated EBITDA of $1.79 billion. And across our portfolio, we employ approximately 35,000 people. Our CEO, Alberto Calderon, and the leadership team I'm part of are fully focused on improving our performance and regaining cost competitiveness. Today I'd like to talk to you about the actions we are putting in place to achieve this, which include getting the foundations right to improve costs, investing in organic growth and capitalising on our exploration expertise. I'll also touch upon our Australian assets and importantly, talk about the major renewables project we announced recently at Tropicana. In the past two years, We've been very busy to revitalise the foundations of the business for long-term success and implement systematic program to deliver change from revisions to our operating model to improve our cost competitiveness. I'll outline some of the milestones so far on this journey. When our current leadership team was formed, we determined that to sustainably re-rate our equity, a series of interlocking initiatives were required to improve our overall business. Our core priorities aimed at safely closing the cost gap with our peers include improving our safety performance, evaluating our culture and values, simplifying our operating structure, restarting and re-ramping up the Abwasi mine in Ghana, extending our mine lives and taking pragmatic commercial steps to unlocking value. In October last year, we unveiled a decarbonisation strategy which is expected to deliver a 30% net reduction of our scope one, scope two greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 from our 2021 baseline. The introduction of renewable power at our Australian operations and building our future operations in Nevada from the start with a carbon neutrality as part of the design will be key to achieving this target. Most recently, we announced a corporate restructure that if approved in just 10 days, will see the company move its primary listing from the New York to the New York Stock Exchange and change our domicile from South Africa to the United Kingdom. Our belief is that the best way to deliver value for stakeholders is through fully realising the potential of our minds and our advanced projects. This is what's driving the significant period of reinvestment in our operations and our full asset potential program, which addresses performance gaps and ensures our assets are focused on sustainable productivity improvements and cost efficiencies. We're moving into the execution phase of this program, and I'll talk more about this later and the benefits we've seen at Sunrise Dam. I recently visited our Tier 1 Abwasi mine, where ramp-up is well underway and was impressed at the progress being made. Abwasi remains one of the world's great ore bodies, with an average grade of over 10 grams per tonne, 20 million ounce resource and a 6 million ounce reserve. Our overall objective remains to safely and responsibly deliver better quality production. When we talk about safety, Anglo Gold Ashanti is a values driven company and ESG is at the heart of our approach. It all begins with safety. Our safety culture, which emphasises risk awareness, 
paired with clear critical controls to manage risk of serious harm, has seen our injury rate fall by around 75 per cent over the past decade. By the end of June, half our total recordable injury frequency rate had dropped to 0.98 injuries per million hours. Our best performance ever, and more than half the ICMM average in 2022, where we were one of the top three producers. Crucially, we had no fatalities at our managed operations, and you can see the full extent of our ESG activities at the hub on our website. We've seen gold sector M&A gain momentum over the last couple of years as companies pursue growth. While we consider M&A transactions that deliver true synergies, and these are rare, we believe the best value for shareholders is added through Brownfield's exploration success and Greenfield's discoveries. Anglo Gold Ashanti remains a highly successful Greenfield's exploration company, and they've discovered in our team more than 112 million ounces of gold in the last 20 years from five countries. Of these, Tropicana is in production, the resources at, at, in Guinea are in pre-production, we have a project in Colombia undergoing an optimised feasibility study, and we'll talk about the Nevada project shortly, which are under pre-feasibility study. Importantly, our Greenfields resource additions have been at a cost well below the industry average. This success is largely due to consistent support from the company's executive and board of directors and is led by Phil Newton, who's in the audience here today. Our current Greenfields portfolio is focused on the countries where we have operations. The company's exploring for value strategy ensures our exploration activities are focused on maximising value for the business, allowing us to bring low confidence ounces into the portfolio at an early stage. This ensures our exploration pipeline can deliver into our life and mind plans at the right time. Anglo Gold Ashanti's Greenfields exploration portfolio is nicely balanced between non-technical risk tier one discovery potential and exploration maturity. Many of the geoscientists involved in historical discoveries are still with the company, and this culture of success should ensure consistent delivery of new quality greenfields ounces into the pipeline. We are also open to partnering on high quality joint ventures, a good example of which is here in Australia. We recently announced an earn-in with inflection resources, exploring for gold copper porphyries in the Lachlan Fold Belt in New South Wales. Focusing on our Nevada projects, when Anglo Gold started exploring the Beatty District in southern Nevada, it had been ignored for many years with companies focused and drawn to the potential in the northern part of the state and a significant endowment there. We have effectively leveraged our first mover advantage to consolidate the district using geological insights gained from the discovery of silicon and merlin. We are now positioned to realise the potential of this, this exciting new gold district through systematic exploration and optimisation of project development. The consolidation involved the acquisition of US Junior Corvus Gold in early 2022, followed by the purchase of core mining's ground in the district in September 2022. The Corvus acquisition included the North Bullfrog District and the mother load deposits, and the core purchase encompassed the crown block series of deposits and the decommissioned sterling mine. These acquisitions enabled us to fully explore the growing Merlin mineralized system and add economies of scale to the silicon project. We have had up to 12 drill rigs in operation at silicon and Merlin with a focus now on Merlin resource definition drilling. At the same time, we've been progressing a feasibility study at North Bullfrog, an advanced deposit that came with the Corvus transaction. At the end of 2022, mineral resource for our Nevada projects totaled 8.4 million ounces and growing. The Beatty District is expected to be in annual production at more than 200,000 per ounces per annum through to 2035 and grow further to more than 300,000 ounces per annum over several decades from the mid 2030s at tier one costs. We expect to complete the feasibility study mentioned on North Bullfrog by year end. The study is advancing open pit alternatives utilising milling and heap leaching processing. Recent results from resource reserve conversion drilling are being incorporated into the study, which will form the basis of the optimised feasibility study to be presented at the end of this year to the board. Permitting processes are continuing, as well as environmental baseline studies, and we expect federal and Nevada permitting processes to be advanced and continuing formally into the first quarter of next year.
We are targeting first gold from the heap leach circuit at the end of 2025, with an annual production starting at 100,000 ounces per annum for the first three years, underpinning further development in this district. At the same time, we've been progressing a pre-feasibility study at Silicon, but after considerable potential at Merlin was discovered and more exploration, the deposits acquired at CORE last year, taking all that into consideration, we made the sense to integrate these two projects into a, the expanded Silicon project. We'll now undertake a conceptual study to optimise development of the combined Silicon Merlin deposits. This will capture the synergies from increased economies of scale and integrated infrastructure with potential for large scale mining. Infield drilling is continuing at Silicon to increase resource confidence and continues to demonstrate upside potential with the deposit remaining open at depth, a long strike and to the west. The expanded silicon project covers the northern and southern deposits of silicon and merlin respectively. Incorporating core sterling project into our land package has allowed us to optimise the definition of the southern portion of the merlin deposit and most importantly locations for future infrastructure. Incorporating core sterling project into our land package has allowed us to optimise the definition of the southern portion and we're excited about the results of drilling we're seeing so far and the mineralisation at merlin remains open in several directions. The cross section you see on the slide here shows the extent and size of, of the deposit with some exciting intercepts, some of which include 285 metres at 3.3 grams per tonne, 215 metres at 2.5 grams per tonne, and 115 metres at 2.4 grams per tonne. We are using information to update our geological understanding for input into a conceptual study and mineral resource declaration by the end of the year. We have disclosed an initial conceptual exploration target in Merlin alone of a between approximately six and eight million ounces. I mentioned earlier <coughs> the real synergies in transactions are rare, but an agreement we signed with Goldfields earlier this year on a proposed joint venture in Ghana is a really good example of a proposed or that adds value where the whole is worth more than the sum of the parts. In March, the companies agreed to the terms of this joint venture between Goldfield's Tarqua mine on the right and Anglo Gold Ashanti's neighbouring Idiopreme mines. When the transaction is complete, it's proposed that the government of Ghana will have a 10% stake, with Anglo Gold Ashanti holding 30% and Goldfield's the remaining 60% and they'll be the operator. The proposed JV presents an exciting opportunity to finally combine operations that are essentially part of the same mineral deposit. Both companies are engaging with senior government officials and will continue engaging with them, relevant regulators and other key stakeholders with a view to implementing the proposed JV as soon as practically possible. If the JV goes ahead, it has the potential to form Africa's largest gold mine with estimated annual production of more than 900,000 ounces per annum over the first three years at all in sustaining costs of US $950 an ounce. Gold production would then settle on an average of 600,000 ounces per annum over the projected nearly two decades, well beyond that of Idiopreme as a standalone. Moving on to some updates on the Australian business unit to close out. I'd like to take a moment to thank Mike Erickson. He's actually in the audience now and here at Diggers and Dealers. He's retiring from AGA and his thankless efforts in supporting the sector in the region have not gone unnoticed by many. We'd also like to welcome Perko to his new role. Some of you know him as the GM of Tropicana and other roles as he starts his um, position in leading the region. And I'm very excited by this. Starting with Sunrise Dam, it's a great example of where rewards that can be delivered from investing in existing assets can realise their full potential. The large underground drill program initiated in 2019 at the site has added more than 1.8 million ounces, independent of depletion, with new discoveries such as Frankie and Flamingo. This has also been achieved at a discovery cost of less than Aussie $25 an ounce. The new zones support Sunrise Dam's strategy to improve flexibility, lift grades, and an optimised schedule over a five-year horizon. The satellite pit of Golden Delicious has just been completed and we can now mining the smaller Mac pit and remnant mining of the Clio pit, 
Vogue will continue to be the main source underground. A pre-feasibility study is being undertaken of a massive layback at the Clio pit in the picture here, with the potential to yield up to 20 million tonnes of 1.7 grams per tonne. Sunrise Dam was the first mine in the portfolio to participate in the Philaster Potential Program. Increasing development productivity to achieve a step change in underground production was the most significant opportunity identified. Improved jumbo performance, increasing development rates from 1,200 metres a month this year to a targeted 1,400 metres a month next year is underpinning this, along with better spatial compliance in priority headings, efficiencies from a new fleet management system contributed to a significant lift in tonnes from just under $220,000 a month, next year targeting 245,000 tonne per month. Sunrise Dam produced 127,000 ounces in the first half of this year. At Tropicana, in which we hold a 70% interest with Regis holding the 30%, is a key component of the Anglo Gold discovery history I talked to earlier, contributing over 4.3 million ounces, inclusive of reserve, to our resource base as a company in 2022. Over the life of the asset, more than 11 million ounces at 100% have been outlined and there's still potential to grow. The geology team has been effective in adding resources and reserves ahead of mining, which has been critical in lifting underground output to around 2 million tonne per annum from Boston Shaker and Tropicana undergrounds, where there still remains down dip potential. Commercial production from the expanded Havana pit, which is undergoing a major cutback at the moment, was achieved in March this year. Open pit mining continues to be a stable base of production at Tropicana, despite impacts from the COVID era. A pre-feasibility on underground mining is also being planned and expected to be finalised this year. The site produced 196,000 ounces this year. Closing out, I think a key story is our decarbonisation strategy. In June, we entered into an agreement with Pacific Energy to construct and operate 62 megawatt of wind and solar capacity at Tropicana being one of the biggest renewable projects in the country. The hybrid facility will be a first of its kind for Anglo Gold. This will be comprised of six megawatt wind turbines, four of them, and 24 megawatts of solar um, plants supported by a 14 megawatt battery system. All of this is expected to reduce our gas consumption by 50%, leading to a reduction in carbon emissions of more than 65,000 tonne per annum. This will be undertaken um, by a contractor, which is a 10-year build contract, which will be handed over to Tropicana at the end and integrated into our gas plant at the moment. Construction is expected to start in the second half of 2023, and the project is due for completion in early 25. The project team is already working on transportation logistics to bring wind turbines to site. Each one has a hub height of 130 metres and a rotor diameter of 165 metres. Once established, the Tropicana Renewable Projects will be responsible to account for 15% of Anglo Gold Ashanti's total targeted carbon emissions reduction by 2030. We're also working on a 13 megawatt solar and 12 megawatt battery system at Sunrise Dam. So in conclusion, 2023 remains a transitional year for us, but we're on track as we continue to focus on regaining our cost competitiveness. The Full Asset Potential Program is working as intended. The ramp up of our giant Abwasi mine continues to progress. Our world-class exploration and project teams continue to add value in Nevada and across our global portfolio. We're focused on improving our operational and capital efficiencies, and we are progressing our ESG projects, including reducing our carbon footprint. Finally, we are working to optimise our corporate structure in a transaction that is expected to deliver enhanced access to the world's deepest pool of capital through our primary listing on the New York Stock Exchange, an improved competitive position in line with our global peers, a corporate domicile in the United Kingdom, a leading low-risk jurisdiction and minimal disruption for existing stakeholders. Thank you. Thanks, Terry.